Welcome back, disc golf fans, to the back nine coverage of round one of the 2021 MVP Open at Maple Hill, presented by MVP Disc Sports. Brian Earhart back again with Nate Perkins. And like you mentioned in the front nine, we're getting a good glimpse of uh, the challenges that Maple Hill and this current layout is presenting. You have to throw premium lines out here if you want to score. And you have to scramble very, very well. There's so many uncomfortable positions that this course puts you in. As you can see, quite a bit of red and maroon on these scorecards. But Connor and Matt Orham are under par, two under, on a course where a 5 to a 10, not that bad of a score. Um, especially with a couple holes getting a little tougher out here. We move into the back nine. That's a little bit more scoreable. We're climbing the hill right here. Hole 10, straight up it. It says 384. Brian, it has to play 450. It plays about 450. It's an absolute smash of a drive. And you have to get a disc to slightly flip up a little bit as you get up the hill because the higher uphill you go, the more nose up your drive naturally gets. So you have to throw speed. A nice speedy drive. Ooh, Connor going a bit too inside. He's going to have a long way up the hill still. Little slip, it looks like, from Jordan. Left side still gives him somewhat of a chance to get up and down. It's tough to climb that wall when you're that far down the hill. Come on, come on, come on. Say it. Yeah, Matty. Oh, oh, so close to getting a good. Oh. Fade just clips that Christmas tree and from the front, let's take a look at Matt Orm's follow through actually. This is something that I find very interesting. Kind of charges the tee pad. Yeah, it kind of like brings his hand up and I, I don't know, it's just... <laughs> that extra flair yeah. he has. We all love that extra flair. His routine... And stroke looks similar on his max power drive as it does the yeah the smooth shots. And Kale just throwing a hyzer up the hill, getting a roll out of the woods. He's still gonna have a decent ways up there. Connor's going back to that. I believe it's the faith. Uh, and he just doesn't get far enough. That was a big shot yeah. with the putter to to attempt. You know, especially there's a slight wind coming at us from the top of the hill. Maybe slightly left to right up there. Kale's just gonna throw a hyzer off to the left side, 20 feet from the basket. And this this is even a tricky up and down. He might be playing to the right side of that wall to just give himself a putt. Yeah. Not too bad, because if you're pinned up right next to the wall, it's actually kind of a tough putt. Mm. Just off the tray, and that's going to be a bogey tap in for Connor. You see the wind is starting to rip out here. Kind of see the wind hold that one up a little longer. Just ripping. No. Making these uphill putts tough. Jordan misses off right, and that's going to be a bogey for Jordan. I like the play to the left side. I never really thought about playing over there. And I wonder if Kale was intentionally doing that. I can't see him trying to play for the front of the of the wall. 
Oh, and Jordan was a lot longer away from the basket than I thought. And this is a double bogey putt from, from here. Oh, boy. That's a real shame. He didn't even get into his routine on that one yeah. either. Yeah, that looks like be a hard to. Pure sometimes. frustration. Yeah. Jordan's going to tap out a six. Triple bogey. Connor tapping out a four. Hole 10 showing his teeth as well. We're going to move into 11. Bombs away off the top of the hill over these beautiful pine trees. Really tough to get a good win read on this one. The yeah. flags seem to be like they're ripping in your face, but when you get down closer to these trees, it's protected. The wind isn't blowing as much. And then you have this tight gap into the woods that you're most of the time having to throw through the next grouping of these Christmas trees. So distance is absolutely crucial off this this hole. So let's see uh, let's see what Matt has up his sleeve here. Kind of pulls it a bit. Those trees on the right side are not great, but he's gonna be. In the open, hopefully not behind some of those bigger ones in the middle. Just a smooth hyzer release. Yeah. That's right in the open with plenty of distance. get into one of those bunkers quick. If you leak mm -hmm. left, there's no telling if you're gonna have footing, if you're gonna have a line. Yeah, I think what Kale did is exactly what Connor needs to do here. Just a simple hyzer. You don't need to put too much shape into it. Just one line. And he's going to be off a little bit left, but he still might have something. But like you said, it's it's a grab bag from there. I like this. Oh, oh he got up there and threw quick, but he ripped it. And he's just right of the trees. Flexing oh, early. Close. It looked like it was panning through mm -hmm. the gap at first. And so these trees are for sale, right? The Christmas trees? Yeah. Oh, yeah. People absolutely. come and buy these trees. Yeah, it's absolutely enormous property. It's And it shapes the course to, you know, to be as unique as it is. It's got so many scenic Every hole parts to it. Yeah. It's a signature hole. It's a whole yeah. like, experience in itself. Ooh, a little inside flippy turnover. Shot. That is too beautiful. Oh! oh. I'm way off on the right side. I'm going to go, once this comes out, I'm, I'm watching that one over again. That is a beautiful second shot from Matt. He drew that perfectly. Yeah, Jordan throws a clean hyzer through the gap. It's a nice reaction. He's parked. Okay, Connor does the same. Getting back to even. Yeah. This is a great birdie to get. Yep. That's a big bounce back right there after whole 10 man 
Yeah, one of Jordan's toughest holes that I've seen him play on camera. Yeah, and bounce back. even after the birdie, he's plus five. He's He dug himself a bit of a hole, and, and it stinks to be playing just short of clean and then having a hole like 10 happen. So he's got some work to do moving into number 12. Number 12, big distance tee shot, bending a little bit uphill. You're gonna wanna put it as close to this mouth and as centered as possible, because then you have a tricky upshot. Not this basket. We are going down this hill to a blind basket for the most part, unless you crush your drive. So it's a tricky shot that loses ground quickly. It's easy to leak this one down the hill and kill your chances at a birdie. Yes. If you can't oh, yeah. throw it far enough, you at least need to be right go, go, enough. Go, go. <laughs> Matt has crushed Whoa, this drive. Down the mouth. You have to have 500 feet of power to, to go down the hill. That's a massive drive. Most of the time you're looking at the edge of the hill, not seeing the basket. And he got pumped up about that shot, mm -hmm. too. <laughs> he hit the height perfectly, because that's the thing. It's easy to, to not throw it low enough to p keep pushing forward at the end of the flight. Oh, no. Mm. That's going to be a... Maybe an overhand for Jordan. He's in the thick stuff right there. Yeah, it can be hard to find your disc in there. They're, they're really hard to throw out of. Yeah, you saw the spotter running after it. Hopefully they got a good look. Connor putting a good move on this one, leaking a little bit left. But he gets down the hill as well. It stays up high too. He's, He's using that six angle. foot four frame of his. He just stays so upright. Yeah. He gets that distance just really upright. Doesn't really even coil his shoulders too much. Or and I think really that's something like he'll come ready. into at some point because his sidearm is his bread and butter, but he's mentioned he's put a lot of work into his backhand. I can see that becoming a huge, huge backhand in, in years to come so pure and it just kept floating yeah it's it's a lot shorter than it looks connor chipping the harp up yeah. you kind of just have to snap your wrist and let the disc just naturally fade just like that truly just a snap of the wrist right there literally yeah it's the the loss in elevation cuts off a hundred feet from the shot. It feels like. Hmm. Hitting something halfway through. It's gonna be a par. Good par save. Oh yeah, from Jordan. Yeah, great out par save. The, with the roller. Did I miss? And he threw a huge roller huge out of the roller. trees. This is Matt for a birdie. This is a great hole to get a birdie on. Having that distance makes this hole so much easier. What an incredible line to get one to yeah. go that far down the hill. Because it's sloping. It you know, it's sloping right to left to sort of throw that left to right panning shot. With the right height is so good. He's bogey free as well. Mm-hmm. This, this has to be one of the signature birdies out here. Oh, yeah. You remember this birdie in every way that you've got it. It's so birdie. beautiful to let a slower disc 
push forward forever off the top of this hill down to this funneling green oh it's just one of i could sit up here all day i could sit up here all day and empty every disc in my bag on this hole and i do <laughs> and i and i and i do We did have a little bit of a tailwind on this hole, so whatever he threw here is a little flippy, and he gets a great tree kick. He's gonna be maybe edge of circle two. That's also drifting a bit right. And both of those shots just barely over committed, mm -hmm. I would say. Just leaking a little bit too far right. Kale got a slide to put him to potentially pin high. I'm not sure how right of the basket he was. Yeah, we need something that comes out and just drifts. Oh no. Early, early release for Jordan. Oh. Rive? Heiser? Is he going high? No way. He is going high. Oh okay. Right. Well, there you go. Those trees are tall. It's a big it's shot. It's a huge hyzer. I mean, he's going to be backside of the green. I don't know if he's going to have a look through those skinny trees, but... That... <laughs> Did you see that climb out of the... Yeah. Just, it's up against the base. What a shot from Jordan. That was crafty. Yeah, so Kale got a decent slide. He's about 55. Hmm. Hmm. Also doesn't get the birdie. This is a tough one to get. Yeah, we're gonna keep the par. And Connor will also tap in a par. Yeah, just a tough, tough hole to pure. And since the basket's sitting on this tiny little plateau, it's not easy to get it you know, into the bullseye on this hole. You have to hit a decent putt. Focus. Get ready in any of those pressure thoughts and really center yourself, like where you're at and the shot you're throwing, trying to just really let everything besides the basket bleed away. Okay, the anti-lefty hole. Hole, <laughs> hole number 14. Truly the signature hole though. Four, if there, if oh thir yeah. 13 is one of my favorite birdies, but this has to be the signature hole at Maple Hill. 400 plus foot water carry. With the wind coming off of the water and you can barely feel it. So we had to throw wind. a big forehand, Brian? I have birdied this one time in my career with a forehand. Shout outs to Nathan Queen for birdieing this one today. I say anti lefty hole. Somehow this man threw a lefty turnover and got the birdie on this. This is disgusting. And for the right hand backhand here, there's a little tailwind can, out there. You can just play it safe, but you have to make sure that you push it far enough to not find that other pond on that left side. Exactly. So you can't just throw a super safe hyzer. You have to commit out over the, over the water here. And Jordan is doing just that, getting a little bit of a lift. This is a thrill that he's throwing. And wow, he's put it to circle's edge. Fantastic shot. Got a lot of late stability on that shot. Okay. Oh, 
Hard hyzer. Big skip, but he's pin high and he'll be able to pitch up for a three. It's a tough hole. Go in the water, you're going to a long drop zone. Yeah, gets out of hand quick on 14 from the drop zone. It's an identical shot just down. Down the, the water basket. line. Yeah. Yep, straight down it. Yes, oh. Kel jams it straight at the water. It's always a good feeling to go full commitment on a circle two putt from a, either a step or a jump and just know that you're feeling good enough to hit metal. Oh, and even that one was on the weak side. Jordan's going to save the par. Okay, not a bad spread in this hole. No bogeys. Birdie for Kale, three pars. Hole number 15, shorter hole. Tight gap. There is an option to go kind of an outside flex high. Uh, flex hyzer, you know, you got to push it right, flatten it, fade it back to the left. A lot of people are just going straight hyzer flip to the basket. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people's neutral mid ranges on a mm -hmm. slight hyzer flipping up to flat. This and is such a fun hole. I love this after the 440 power distance driver or fairway driver, and now you slow it down a little bit in the woods. Oh, Kale just little bit of nose up trying to really stall one in the green but catches a late tree there it's a fine line those are both great pace Great angle, mm -hmm. just slightly off trajectory. Yeah, it's just you need it to be pushing a little bit more left initially, and the end, you know, then flattening out to the basket. I I think a lot of these trees are very well placed. And Connor's pulling out the faith here. He's feeling really comfortable with the shot right now, and this one's flipping up nicely for him. Oh, Look, yes. Look at this line. No way. Love it. This guy. Let's jump to a form check here for Connor. He, like you said, very upright with his throw. Yeah, doesn't extend very big, and that's kind of how far he goes on a lot of his driver shots as well. He's very compact. He had mentioned that an early problem for him when he was really starting to get good was he was moving too fast and he was trying to kill it too much and he's kind of having a good time in this. Oh, oh my gosh. What? Another spinner, just a little spike hyzer, spin putt, drop it Look into the weak catch side. Look on that left side like that on hyzer. What a sweet shot of that one. Oh, and he back sees. Back to back. He just went 40 footer at the water and then drops that one in. He's two under par. He is moving now. Putter, putter. Love that play. That faith that he just threw is perfect stability. You know you're throwing smooth when you're throwing a putter on a 323-foot hole. Oh, yeah. Just nose up the whole way. And he's challenging the canopy, too. That That's confidence right there. It's easier to throw it lower on these types of holes.
Pig is just the disc for me. From the top of the disc all the way to the bottom of the flight plate, I have 100% control of what this disc does. Thumb track is going to give me consistency and the confidence to hit that angle a little bit better. I can throw sidearm, feel comfortable. I can throw backhand, feel comfortable. High pressure upshot. I'm reaching for the pig. It's the upshot disc. Kev Jones ace hole. This is a nasty par three. <laughs> 471 downhill. There's a swamp on the left that if you pick one of these middle trees and see you're just flying left, it's gone. You'll never could be get gone it back. forever. Yeah. It's, there's an OB line all along the left side. But this is a hole where if you throw a fairway driver down it, you can pure this gap. There's so many different ways to play this hole. I think this is a hole where a lot of the individuality of the player comes out. And Kale has overturned his a little bit too much, but right side is not as bad as getting uh, kicked off to the left side. So this is exactly the disc that I thought Connor was going to throw on this. This is a 7-speed. He's going to be popping this on a little hyzer. And the whole way down the hill, it's going to hit that flat shelf. And well, let's see it from here. Oh, I love that angle though. Actually, watching from down the tunnel. Yeah, because he's he's all the way past the basket. Yeah, the camera guy, and yeah, I just love that. You angle. get to see the disc move a lot better because you get to see the front edge of the disc. And this oh. <laughs> nearly perfect. It's so precise. Jordan cooking that one over a little bit, and that got a nasty kick as well. And he got the red flag. Just can't catch a break this, this is round. Not his day. Gosh, that's pretty meddy. It really is. I agree, Kill. <laughs> you gotta love the Eric Oakley diving for discs frisbee. Okay, so th this is worst case scenario spot on this hole, really. You're OB, you're throwing three, and he, he has OB now all along his left side. So if he hits any of those trees and kicks left, like oh, oh, that okay. one. Yeah. Now he's early circle one. Ooh, Connor going patent pending with the faith. He has been putting work in with that putter. No way. Great shot. Yeah, those are the kind of shots that you had mentioned before. That he said he was working on just kind of a, a an intuitive throw, getting so comfortable with the putter. Kale nearly going three in a row <laughs> with the and throw just in. getting further every time. <laughs> but I mean, he's going back to Connor. Yes, Jordan. Saving bogey. <laughs> but I guess as, you know, Kale's lining this up, it's those little tricky up and downs where you think back and, you, I, you know, I guess Connor's a good example, but there's been a lot of good up and downs on this card. You can look back at a tournament and, and realize that you screwed up five of them, you know? And it, you take them for granted a lot of the times, but... Some of these ridiculous scores you see are because all the little things are done correctly. They have moved this tee pad back quite a bit on number 17. It makes it a go from one that you should really get to a pretty difficult birdie. You have it's, to throw far. Yeah, it's 440 or so to clear the first wall of Christmas trees. And if you don't, get past those trees it's hard to shape one well enough because of the way this gap is small left to right and kind of low ceiling it's a tee shot it's a straight up tee shot hole like if you don't throw your tee shot in the perfect spot like kale is about to do that needs to carry though yeah. 
Oh, and he is it's past good him. enough. Still going to have weird footing, but... This is Connor's flippiest rive. Oh, so he's going to hit this on some hyzer. Oh, boy. Swung the hips open on that one. You saw it right away. Again, it's hard to swing a hyzer, uh, or hard to push a hyzer straight instead of letting your body kind of come with it. And that's the common miss, and that's why those push hyzers are so challenging. And this one's extra tough, too, because of the gap. You have to throw it like 250 before it starts flipping. Yeah. Hey, Maddie, there's, there's an area right there with no trees. Kale is right. There's an area right there with no trees. Matt's found it. It's still going to be a little short right. Did they get rid of the OB left? No. There's a there. great shot Let's from go, Jordan. Go, baby. That should, be, that should be fine. He should be all right. right. And here's Connor. Where is this? This is short right. He got a bad kick. He's just trying to find a gap. No. He's still in here. And this is bogey at best. Okay, a little Here's bit deep. Pass the pin. Yeah, this pin slightly elevated. Easy to go long. Yeah, gotta land this one softly. He's so good at that exact shot. He just... <laughs> I'm gonna make Ryan, a compilation of just ridiculous touch <laughs> shots that he throws. He just draws up the entire line. The entire way you know he's dictating the entire flight. Along with like the sliding on the ground and the landing. Alongside a great shot from Connor. Yeah, I mean, Matt has to be up there in the all time category. Oh, yeah. For, for control of the disc. Just overall control, control of a backhand, for sure. And, um,. Kale, coming up a bit short. So Connor is at one under going into hole 18. He, under par on this track is not bad. It's in the mix. Especially with the conditions mm -hmm. we had. Hole 8 playing Friday. longer, 17 playing longer. The wind not benefiting you on hole 8. Hole 1... Another hole that was not easy to play. But then you have just ultimate risk reward par four coming up on 18. And I want to make a quick comment about this tee shot. I love, they made this change a few years ago to push it back behind this stone wall. The immediate uphill forces you to throw something flippier on a hyzer that goes upwards then flattens and then pushes over if you want max distance it's a uh, tough shape oh yeah with, with that ob left as well but then you have this island green with the two stone walls the bleachers behind it you have to make a decision do i run the birdie or do i risk going out of bounds one of the all-time great finishing holes in disc golf a right, little bit of hyzer. Oh, and he sneaks through he everything. Through. But the right side makes it so much tougher to come into the green. He's going to be pinched. If he's going to want to attack, he's going to have to throw a forehand, I would imagine. Yeah, and there's that push hyzer from Kale. And that's a little bit more conservative. I would guess he's going to be throwing just a chip shot up to the front. If you're you need not at going least 415 off the tee yeah. to consider attacking. Yeah, if you're not going for the birdie, it's actually a pretty easy par. But it's it just gets you sweating when you're in position, but you know you you're maybe a little far back, but you think you can get it. Oh, 
Okay. Now we got some decisions to make. Clubhouse in the background. Yeah. This is this is how you make the whole stress free. A lot of players are telling themselves to go four 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 in the event. Kind of a soft approach there for Connor. You want to push the rock wall at least a little bit. Stone wall. Matt doesn't have a bogey, right? I don't think so. He's five under. Wow. That's a great number to be shooting for. Yeah, he, he was under control today. Putting on a clinic. Yeah, Connor's going to escape with a one under par. Very respectable number. Not going to be in the lead, but he's definitely going to be in the mix. Yeah, he threw a lot of premium shots. You know, he found him, found himself in trouble on some of the harder holes out here. Scrambled fantastic. Got up and down with the putter really, really well. As did this man. Who has just clearly found his, his rhythm coming into this last stretch. Jordan's final putt, still a bit of a tester. Yeah, Jordan had a tough day, but what a what a card to watch yeah. attack this course. And Jordan had some moments of brilliance. He had some solid shots, but just couldn't keep it together and save par when he needed to. Kale hitting some big putts on 14 and 15 to get that two under par. It's a treat to be up here in early September. It the skies is. are clear. The sun is back out. We had heavy rain on Thursday, three inches overnight. Yeah, it's drying up. Weather is starting to look absolutely beautiful. The fans are piling in and Eagle McMahon is setting the pace early. Nine under par, three strokes over Ricky Wysocki and a few other players at six. Thank you again for tuning in. We have a lot more disc golf coverage coming at you. Round two coming up soon. Again, I'm Brian Earhart, he is Nathan Perkins, and we will see you for round two.